Sweet. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks for being here. So tell us your story. How'd you get into real estate? What do you love about it? What surprises you about it? Yeah, I've got into real estate almost 10 years ago. Um, I worked in a church uh, before then, so kind of had a creative background. And um, one of our one of my close friends offered me a job in real estate. I knew very little about real estate, but uh, I decided to make a switch, and I haven't looked back since. So yeah, it's been it's been a very fun, exciting, um, almost ten years of of selling real estate. Yeah, 10 years. That's no joke. So, I mean, when you got into it, did you think that you would like it as much as you do? Do Well, do you like it? (laughs) I do like it a lot. I actually, it it was the, I didn't know enough about it to have any um, ideas if I would like it or not. It sounded fun. Uh, I've always liked, you know, talking with people before I worked in a church. I, you know, worked at a coffee shop before I worked at a coffee shop. I worked at a a gym. So it was always... uh, people jobs. So it felt similar. And that part of it is correct. My job is to um, consult and communicate with people and help them buy or sell a home. But you know, the home portion of it is probably a smaller fraction than people think a lot of the um, job is communicating with people and and, um, being with them and and walking them through a process that they're not super familiar with. Yeah. So that highly relational side of it uh, was a good fit, good fit for you. That's perfect. So absolutely. Let's, yeah. So, so obviously the market's gone through a ton of changes, but I think the market's always yeah. going through changes. I think some are more severe. I think some of the things we've seen recently are severe, or definitely more on the forefront, like he- lots of news-heavy stuff. And so I know we definitely have some of the same conversations with buyers as they kind of go through this process. Uh, for someone who's mm-hmm. done it for 10 years, like what do you see often that people come in as buyers that are maybe misconceptions or what's a really good tip that you would uh, want buyers in this market to know to be successful? For sure. Um, I feel like the most common thing is they don't even know what to ask. So generally what I do with a new buyer is lay down the process like mm-hmm. at the yeah. just most fundamental level and just go, here is the process. Um if done correctly, it's actually not super stressful. You know, a lot of people read that it is a super stressful process, but if, if done correctly and with a good, uh, good broker and a good, a good back backup team, like I have, um, that, that process should be actually very, um, smooth. Um, so I kind of go into that a lot at the beginning. I go, here's how it should look. Um, here's the potentials or potential items that could come up that could cause stress, but, um, again, if we do it correctly, when this thing comes up that could cause stress, mm. we've actually already covered it. So we're good to go there. Um, that's kind of my entire, like, uh, the like plan philosophy. that I have yeah. when, yeah, my philosophy, that's a good way to say it, um, is I really like to make the process, you know, 10 times smoother than they anticipated. So, sure. um, you know, what, whether that means pulling up, uh, our work truck to their house to help them move last minute items or uh, spending three hours at their home before the photos to get it like perfect or, um, you know, opening the, the house during escrow uh, 10 times so that they can remeasure the living room. Like whatever that item is, um, we, yeah. we just take care of it. That's like our big thing. Yeah. And I think there's, so that's good. I mean, there's always unexpected things that come up and those are, I would think we'd both agree that things that cause stress. So yeah, coming back to the beginning and saying, Hey, look, as the expert, like I've been here, I've done this and here's what's going to happen. And that's so good. Cause then when it does happen, they go, Oh, Kyle, Kyle said that. that. Okay. So we're good. All right. Like the freak out meter, like has a, has a stop to it. Cause like, are we supposed to freak out? Like, Oh no. Okay. We're good. (laughs) We're good. That's awesome. Absolutely. Yep. What are you seeing? Um, I mean, what are you seeing be successful for buyers in a market that's shifting so much? Like, what mm-hmm. what helps them? What's a good mindset or thought process or yeah. uh, like strategy they can use even to just be successful trying to buy a home in this market? Well, this market the the, the rough part about it for buyers is obviously the interest rates are are quite a bit higher than they had been for eight and a half years of my career. So in this last Mm -hmm. year year and a half, two years, um, rates rates have more than doubled. So these buyers are getting pretty intense um, payment shock. Um, 
So I actually boiled it all the way back down to what I've always said with clients. Um, can you afford the house? <laughs> like, do you want to afford this payment? So is the payment higher at, at a $500,000 house uh, than it was two and a half years ago? Yes. But can you, I would have advised you two and a half years ago, can you afford it? And I'm still advising that exact same thing. So, um, you know, a lot of people are saying right, different little catchy, catchy things to, to get people to buy homes. I've um, said none of those because I think they're a little cheesy and I don't <laughs> believe them. Yeah. <laughs> You know, I'm not going to tell a client, you should buy this house because you'll probably be able to refinance. You know, will, will rates hopefully go down in the next two years? Yes, that's that's the, the, the hope right. and the, you know, people in the lending world uh, strongly think that'll happen. But I go, well, what if it doesn't happen? Can you afford the house now? It, you know, whatever your comfortability is and uh, right. yep. your income, you know, with your income. So that's what we talk about now. So if you can afford the house now, well, then you can afford the house when you hopefully do get to refinance in a few years. Um, but if you can't afford it, let's drop yeah. that purchase price and uh, look in that area um, and kind of rinse and repeat. If you're still not comfortable there, let's, let's, let's drop that price or pause or wait or reevaluate needs or uh, look at homes with, with mother-in-law suites or ADUs um, where you can get some potential income or maybe yeah. go to a duplex. There's, there's so many variety of, of potential properties. And I think it's my job as a, as a, broker to go, what are your end goal needs and what can we do right now with the market to get you there? And if, uh, that's good. You know, if you want an $800,000 house with a water view, but you can only afford a $500,000 house, well, let's look right. at the $500,000 house because it's still a vessel for that future dream. Sure. Um, so oh, that's good. Setting proper expectations. And that's so good. Something you said basically is like, Hey, let's look at the end goal. Let's go to the end and then work yeah. our way back. I think that's probably where I think most buyers maybe get ahead of themselves as they start at the beginning and go, mm -hmm. well, we just have to figure out how the heck to get in. You're like, okay, yes, let's make sure you have the right mindset. Let's make sure we've actually had that conversation around goals and then figure out how you get Absolutely. there. Cause I think, uh, I mean, I don't know if you see this more I'd be curious <clears> to know <throat> what you see. Like, do you think people still have the same, okay, let me rephrase this. So like with Zillow and everything where you can kind of window mm -hmm. shop and you see all the fancy stuff and you can l spend your whole day looking at $3 million properties. Do you think people come into the process and by people, I mean, do you think buyers come in maybe with the thought of like, oh, I want that house. And we, have we lost mm -hmm. sight of the starter home? Do you think that's that still a really exists? Good question. <laughs> I think with social media um, and the window shopping of Zillow, definitely when you look at a $3 million house and it looks really nice, then when you actually go see something in your price point, it's going to feel, you know, different. But I also do think that real estate is like, people don't think they can buy the $3 million house if their budget is 450,000. So I do think there's a distinction. I think we like to window shop. So, so it's not yeah. many times where I'm showing a client with a budget of 450 and they're like, Oh shoot, I thought we were going to be looking at these, you know, $3 million homes. So right. yes, it's fun to look at those homes. Um, but I feel like most people understand, uh, kind of based on their, their income where they're probably going to be. That said, there still is the payment shock of, you know, Oh, I thought a starter home, you know, would cost this much, but really it's costing this much. Right. Um, but I do think with social media, people do skip a few steps because there are going to be, you know, people your age in homes that you think are really nice, but we don't know anything about their story. We don't know where right. they live. We don't know their income. We don't know anything. Um, I think r real estate is a very safe place to put your money. Oh, um, sure. And again, we have to have homes, um, you know, and I, I don't, and I'm not against renting for certain uh, people and for certain um um, seasons, maybe. Also, oh, you're kind of getting seasons. That's right. a, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, I think it's a very good thing too. I'm definitely not the, the broker that's like you have to buy the second you can because you know not everyone even maybe wants to buy. But if you do want to buy, if it's part of your your long term goal, you you're probably going to have to start smaller than the dream house. Um, yeah. So that's not a bad thing to start in a home that's. Um, potentially more modest and using right. that home to catapult you into the next home and the next home and the next home. Yeah. I think something I've seen is like, as it's gotten, and I think I use the air quotes of like harder, it's gotten harder to buy from an affordability standpoint is that 
uh, there's still the same people that are super committed to it that see the long-term wealth building mm -hmm. piece of it, but you still have these people who are like, well, they're the ones asking like, well, we're going to wait because rates are going to come down or we're going to wait because property values are going to fall. And you're like, there's always been that conglomerate of people. Uh, but I think overall, I think it's important. And what I've been trying to explain to buyers is like, Hey, look, it's harder, but it's still worth it. Like just because it's harder For now, sure. yeah. like it's still worth it when we look at the long-term perspective and, and do those things like, Hey, let's, let's figure out what your goals are. And I like we said about mm -hmm. renting too, because if you rent with a purpose, right. And if you're renting, if you're not renting like aimlessly, like, ah, oh, we don't know what we're going to do, but if you're planning and you're saving, sure. you're budgeting and you're prep, if renting is your on-ramp to owning, then a hundred percent renting is, is yeah. the way to go because you never know, right. In a year, if you're married or you had a partner, like you could have a kid and then that next, that yeah. first home looks a little different. So that's good. So start with your end goals, people. Yeah. Start with your end goals and then work backwards. No, yeah. Having a plan is makes a ton of sense. Yeah. We still definitely get those people that are like, <clears throat> I don't know what I'm doing, but I want to buy this house. Ah. <laughs> yeah. No, Which, for sure. Yeah. We can help there too. Cool. That's really good. Awesome. Let's talk about sellers. Let's pivot a little bit. Um, when uh, obviously the market, again, shifted a lot for sellers when we went from insane things were pending in two minutes to now, okay, maybe it's sitting a little bit longer, but actually, you know, not too long, but you know, when you go from an hour to 30 days, you know, to a seller, that's probably yeah, uh, an different. eternity. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are you seeing, is there anything Absolutely. in particular that you're doing with some of your listings? And I know every listing is going to be different, but is there anything in particular that you're mm -hmm. seeing really works or something that maybe that sellers in their mind, like, or, or do they have a certain mindset that needs to shift a little bit that hasn't quite caught on? What are you seeing in terms of listings? What's working? What's effective? Like what's a really good tip for sellers right now? For sure. Proper expectations is huge. Um, you know, when we, when I, when we put our listing caps on, we're, we're essentially marketing consultants. You know, our job is to make sure that the home is highlighted in the best possible way. Um, making sure we can get as many eyes on it. Um, but also pricing is marketing. You know, we have to price it at a point where people get in the door. Um, so setting those expectations of, Hey, with this price and the, so essentially the marketing package we've done for this home, we anticipate X amount of days on market. You know, we, we anticipate this many people in the door. Um, but the market is insanely honest. It's brutally honest. So we can still put it there and go, you know, we think this is what it's going to do. And sometimes it's, um, faster or sometimes it's slower, obviously, but I think the expectations are the biggest thing because um, mm, if, if you tell your seller, hey, we're going to get three offers in the first day and you get no, no showings, well, they're going to be pretty frustrated. So that's or think where something's wrong. Understand, yeah. Or think something's wrong, yeah. So understanding the marketplace that you're in, understanding, uh, I mean, I know this is Whatcom County specific, but Whatcom County is super, super diverse in this market. You know, a home in Bellingham is going to be priced very different than a home just 15 minutes away uh, in, in the, in the County or Linden or Ferndale. Um, so, right. you know, if a seller is seeing this home and well, that got, you know, that sold in two days, it, it's, it's such a, I think a unique market where if you're in like downtown Seattle or, 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 uh, King County somewhere, it, it might feel different, but our area is super, super, um, diverse. So we're marketing very differently in one zip code versus the next zip code, even though it's only a 15 minute drive. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we work a lot and then we use, tons of data. So we essentially say, Hey, here's what's the market's doing in your specific zip code. So when a house sits for, uh, 33 days, that's actually okay. Cause that's much, that's way under what, what the neighbors are doing. Um, but yeah, it is, it is a slightly volatile market where, you know, rates are real and buyers are looking at the affordability of the home and going, you know, this is a X amount a month home. And that's, right. you know, a lot of money um, or more than they thought it would be. So we're having to get creative with, um, you know, uh, rate buy downs for, for buyers, um, you know, seller paid closing costs. We're yeah. having to get creative in all those ways because essentially my job as the listing agent is to, you know, make my seller as much as I can. Um, so we're right. having to get creative with that. So, so you see that is a, yeah. In addition to pricing it right. So we're kind of one here you saying is like, Hey, we got to price it right based on your very, very specific market. And then uh, mm -hmm. are you still seeing, like how are those conversations going with the seller? When you approach them and say, I feel like most people at this point know, like, yeah, it's tough for affordability. 
are, are sellers open to those concepts of like, hey, let's offer credit uh, for buyers, mm -hmm. like rate buy down, whether it's permanent or temporary? Are you are you coming and putting packages together that include that stuff? Or are you saying to the seller, like, maybe that's, <clears throat> hey, look, this is plan A. If that doesn't work, that's more like plan B. And then we've got plan C, you know, if it's still not going according to plan. Or is it everything kind of up front? Like, what's working best, do you think? Sure. I mean, you have to be... Um willing to adjust in, in a market like this because one strategy that worked four weeks ago might not work on this specific home. Um, so, but no, I, I'm having those conversations where essentially saying, Hey, this is a thing that might move it. So let's, let's either offer it up front or let's um, be ready to offer it. So, you know, it might be a $12,000 buy down seller that you have to pay. Um, let's remember that this line item exists and we might need to utilize this as a cool. marketing Just kind of piece. keep it in your back. So it, Absolutely. So yeah, I mean, and everything has a line item. So, um, you know, landscaping, a kitchen remodel, bathroom remodel, all these things are different things that could help a sale. So we can't, well, not in every home, we, we can't do all of them. Um, so you kind of have to be picky. And again, that's where getting your broker in as early as possible to kind of really look at that mm -hmm. game plan with you is huge. I've had numerous people call me after they've spent X amount of oh, money man. on yeah. a remodel and you're like, well, shoot, that actually didn't adjust the the price point in the way that we thought it would. It wasn't a dollar for dollar remodel. Um, so, you know, now we're kind of sitting with this amount of money spent that doesn't actually move the needle on the sale. So getting your broker in as soon as you have the, you know, thought of selling is something I strongly recommend. And it's hard because some people like, some people might not have the relationship with their broker that they feel like they can say, Hey, I'm not selling for a year, <laughs> you know, like, right. but I'd love your help. So I think that goes back to a huge part that we uh, on my team try to do is like, we are consultants. When you, when you purchase or sell a home with us, you know, our, our, you can still call us for hopefully forever. So yeah, I love having conversations with my buyers and sellers where it's like, Hey, we might sell in two years. What can we do to, you know, what, what color should we paint the walls? What should we replace the roof or should we do, do a new furnace? Um, so if you have a trusting relationship with your broker where you don't think that broker is going to essentially be like, let's sell. Yeah, great. I'll be you know, able to put it you up. Do, <laughs> yeah. If you do have a relationship with your broker where you feel like they are not your consultant, you feel like they are a salesperson, I would probably find a new broker because a good broker is closer to your financial advisor, not, not in the responsibility, but in that role where it's like, Oh no, sure. no, no. I'm, I'm just here in the sidelines this whole time. I I'm on, you know, I don't right. care if you need to sell in two years, three years. Um, so I love getting calls from my, my clients where it's like, Hey, what should we do in this room? Even if we're not yeah. selling, we just want to put money into the house that, that has some kind of return. And so that makes sense. Right. Anyway. Cause yeah. you're there, right? You're, you're in the market every yeah. single day, every hour of every day. So you yeah. see what's work, what works, you see what doesn't. And so that's a great, that's a great piece of advice. Cause I don't think I wouldn't have thought that I don't have thought be like, Hey, let's go yeah. Kyle and see what I think about what color I'm going to paint my bathroom. But, um, but that's incredible. And I think that speaks to the yep. level of service that you provide and something that people should definitely challenge as far as what uh, goes into that realtor bucket of like, Hey, what do we look for when we look for a great agent to work with mm. is like, it's not just Absolutely. somebody who's going to right? The, the cliche is somebody who's going to open the door for you. It's like, no, like if we walk it, the whole conversation back, right? This is somebody who's going to actually ask you about your goals and your dreams, right? Long-term, short-term, right? And these are the things we do, I think a little bit maybe easier or they're more on the forefront on the lending side, but equally as important on the, on the actual like boots on the ground, like real estate side is like, let's figure out where you want to go and then back it up from there. Not just make a decision on a whim mm -hmm. and then know that, Hey, we're going to be here the whole time. Cause like, I think that's the, absolutely that's the best part uh, about having that, just that local presence too. And I think sometimes, I think sometimes uh, we'll throw our millennial friends under the bus that we look for easy uh, and we overlook the expert. It's like, uh, like if something's a little bit harder than it should be like, Oh, maybe I like actually have to go have a conversation with somebody. Like maybe I'll just type sure. my info in. <laughs> right. And then sure. maybe, right. Like they kind of go for easy <clears throat> over the expert opinion. And I think that's definitely something that, maybe is starting to shift a little bit, but I think something that has been true and will continue to be true through AI and technology and right, yeah. everything is like, Hey, the human to human connection is real. Having an expert who's 
got experience, knowledge, and a great reputation in your market. Like all of that will go yeah. so much further for you. And the reality is like, like that doesn't cost them more. It's the same no. service. It's just at oh, a absolutely. higher, deeper and better level. Yeah. And it's funny you mentioned AI because that's essentially <clears throat> like, I love using chat GPT for workouts or, or nutrition questions or any random questions. But I, I almost try to see myself as that for my clients where I want people to feel like they can like hit a button and be like, Kyle, here's a random real estate question. And I just like tell them the answer <laughs> because I know the answer and I don't care if you bought a house eight years ago or yesterday, I want to be your, essentially your, your real sure. estate AI that you feel like Kyle you can call AI. me, text me. Okay. Kyle AI. So no, it, it's funny you mentioned that because that is how I feel. And I, I like that. I love that relationship with my clients. Um, yeah. And I think it's, you know, why we've been successful because I, I, sure. I, I hope, and I feel like most of my clients know that they can call me or text me anytime. Sure. Sure. It's something I always find myself having to remind people of too. Like, Hey, you're not I'm wasting my time. Like it's no. uh, it's escrow analysis season. So that's lender geek speak for the time that everybody sure. oh, yeah. gets their escrow account. And so it's like, I make it a point to reach out to people and be like, Hey, How's your payment? It probably changed. Let's figure out what that means. Cause people get so confused. They're like, why do my payment change? Mm -hmm. Like, well, let's talk through it. So, and you don't really think about that when you, when you buy a home three years ago, that those are the important questions. Nope. And, and even that servicer who's taking the payment is like, uh, you know, they're not, they don't care. It's an 800 number. So they don't know. Yeah. Work with good, work with good people, people. This is your lesson. Absolutely. <laughs> and the earlier, the better. I think that's the biggest, if I could synthesize my entire thing is like, if you're going to buy or sell a home, the second you know you're going to do it, reach out to that that professional, that lender, the real estate broker. Because, I mean, mm. I, I tell this to my clients all the time for lending. I go, call your lender right now. You don't know, like a lot of people don't know what their credit score is. A lot of people don't know that they have a tiny blip that'll get removed in a month, but they just need to know what sure. that, maybe it's a late payment. Maybe it's a, a too high of credit utilization. I go, call your lender. Uh, let's, let's tackle this now versus what a lot of people do is they go, I like a house. I want to write an offer. And you're like, great, <laughs> but we're, yeah. you know, and we, we can make it happen and we have made it happen many times, but it is a much smoother process when they go, Hey, I think I'm going to buy a house in, in two or three months, you know, or, or even longer. What do I need to do to make yes. sure my credit's perfect? I have the perfect amount of money saved. Then we're just like, sweet. We'll okay. walk you down the line. So yeah. Time is your best friend and your worst enemy. So that's a good, and again, it kind of goes back yeah. to like, you're not wasting our time. That's literally why we exist is to serve you in any yeah. season to make this really huge decision and major purchase a success for you. So absolutely. That's good. 